All right, part two. Um, I hope the lighting's not too bad. I'm filming in the afternoon and there's an amazing amount of sunlight coming in uh, the living room window. So I, I did turn on the light for the mobile phone. Hopefully that'll get rid of some of the shadow. I don't know. Um, I did a trial run of, of this part two thing and I started going, it was getting really, really long due to the fact that I found... Um, uh, I was including too much of the um, the specialized units and also um, starting to talk a lot about the Italian front, which is a good thing um, because obviously we're, we're going to be going on to uh, talking about Caporetto later on uh, when I do the playthrough and everything. But then I went, you know what, uh, A, it's going to cut in too much into the hour-long uh, live stream. And secondly, this will allow me to go over the rules yet again when we actually do uh, Caporetto. So that's a bonus. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of different terrain compared to uh, if anybody's been following along with the, the mini game and whatnot in the Eastern Front. Uh, you know, there's the Alpine. So let's go over and take a look at what they actually look like there. So you can see, so there's some new stuff. This certainly isn't the Eastern Front, um, this, you know, um, Tannenberg, that's for sure. Uh, you've got, like, I mean, up there, I mean, I'm used to seeing the clear, the broken, the woods, the rough, the swamp, uh, suburban, and the urban, and that's it. I have not seen wooded rough yet. Uh, well, down um, towards Galicia, I certainly have, and a uh, mountain there. And then the alpine, which I believe is the most restrictive uh, terrain uh, possible. I'll go over a few things that I found. I guess I could have used Control F or whatever. In the PDF to find all instances of like mountain units or alpine or mountain terrain and so on and so forth but um, I didn't so we'll see how it goes I'm also going to just uh, pop uh, sh zip over quickly a couple a, a few of the place names that I know that seem to be important I'm only up to um, at the moment uh, the fifth battle of the Isonzo so I've got a long way to go before I get to Caporetto but uh, I'm getting there I'm getting there so um, I do know that the Italians are really uh, interested in trying to get this this area here, Trieste, uh, Fiume, I guess. And yet again, I need to find out why, um, or, or it was there a, an amphibious, like a naval component to all this? I have no clue. Um, and here's the Asanzo River, this tiny little area. Uh, it's just amazing to think that 12 battles of the Asanzo. I mean, I don't, like, I haven't read, but I mean, you know, geez, man. Um, I have to find out where Gritzia is. That uh, that uh, town keeps popping up. Um, I keep hearing about that town. Um, also, here's the uh, Piave River, which is, I think, the river that uh, the Italians end up getting pushed back all the way from there um, in, in Caporetto. So that's uh, pretty amazing. And I think, I think the only reason why it stopped was just due to the fact that uh, supply lines... Um, you know, were difficult and so on and so forth. And we'll get into that later uh, in a little bit when I start uh, um, discussing the combat effects and the uh, movement effects due to um, this unbelievably restrictive t terrain, which is the Alpine area. Um, yep, and as you can see, there's not a heck of a lot of, like for the Germans to go and help out the Austrians. It's those rail lines, essentially. Um, yeah. Okay. So here I'll go and grab my notes as, as well as take a look at the uh, terrain effects and you can start seeing why things uh, start becoming unbelievably restrictive. So, um, here I'll put it up towards the color bit so we can see, so you can see both. Um, yeah, that's good there. So we got the uh, mountain is six movement points to cross a hex side. Oh my goodness. And, um, the combat effects is half, uh, have attacker strength and plus three to the die roll for the defender. Um, Counterattack alpine is prohibited, so you can't even cross. And have attacker strength and plus three for the die roll again. Um, and then there's the wooded rough, which is four movement points, minus four die roll for the combat effects, and plus two die roll for the counter uh, counterattack. Um, so there you go, that's, uh, which, but you're going to start seeing when the specialized units, the, they call them the mountain units here, and, um, I guess the, there's the Alpini and, and whatnot, I'm, or I'm not going to get into that, I'm just going to, uh, uh, just talk about, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll get into that when we go towards Caparetto or whatever, but, uh, I, I will go over my notes that I found out now, and, uh, we'll take a look from there.
And it start and then you start seeing uh, why, you know, things were extremely slow moving and um, yeah, this certainly isn't like you know, the speed and seeing cavalry zip on, zipping on over all over the place. So that's for sure. Oh, I did want to see I mentioned this, which I found uh, really fitting, or it was nice to see that um, last week in, in last week's uh, live stream, Charles Latora had mentioned. Um, is there any difference between the first and second edition rules or whatever? Like, oh, like what are the differences and what about the counters and so on and so forth? And I didn't know. Um, and I'm still trying to go and look up some stuff, but this popped up. So I'm, I'm uh, popping this in right now because it is um, specific to that. It says right here in section 3.3, and this is in the Italian front module. Uh, all 1-4 Austro-Hungarian mountain brigades in previously published games should be replaced by 2-4 brigades provided with this game. These units remain as 1-4, maximum strength 1 unit, until moved onto map 6-4, at which time a strength point is added to them, also giving them a maximum strength point total of 2. If they are moved off map 6-4, they revert back to their uh, previous maximum strength point total of 1. All right, and what other notes did I put in here? Oh yeah, uh, the trenches, 22-2. Uh, Units cannot construct trenches in hexes where either mountain or marsh is the only terrain between their hex and hexes occupied by enemy units. And uh, mountain, uh, I mean, obviously is uh, alpine, but you can't build a trench in alpine anyway, so don't worry about it. Neither, oh, here we go. Uh, neither trenches or devastation markers can exist in mountain or marsh hex sides and would not be included in the movement point costs or crossing such hex sides. Well, I didn't see alpine there, but I, I know for a fact you're not allowed to pop them in there. Um, I mean, come on. Supply, 197. A uh, supply line may not be traced into a hex that is occupied by an enemy unit or is in an enemy zone of control and not occupied by a friendly ground combat unit. A supply line may not be tra traced across sea, lake, or alpine hex sides. So there's another wrinkle. Uh, supply 19.8. Uh, the length of, the, of a supply line is calculated in terms of the movement points it would take to move along the supply line by normal movement. In other words, not counting the enemy zone of control costs. From the hex occupied by the unit to that occupied by the HQ um, supplying them. And, uh, or potentially supplying them. So that comes into effect yet again with this incredibly restrictive uh, movement point costs, uh, you know, going through the mountain regions. Um, yeah, you're going to have to keep your headquarters extremely close to your attacking units. It's just the way it is. Um, oh, a retreat, 14-6. Uh, units cannot retreat normally into hexes they could not move into using the one hex per turn minimum move. Retreating into such a hex is the absolute last option for cavalry and infantry type units and mountain and alpine units, those special units, uh, those are, uh, you know, assault as well. They're infantry type units, so they're, they're considered uh, there. And all other units are eliminated if forced to do so. So yet again, that's a, another thing to consider, um, you know, with this restrictive ter terrain. If you have to retreat, um, you could be eliminated or yeah, you know, uh, yeah, like a headquarters or what have you. You got to be careful. Um, zones of control ten six zones of control do not extend across sea or alpine hex sides, or into hexes in neutral countries. And here's another one. Uh, winter weather thirty four five on map six four the Italian front. Winter effects don't end until the completion of the seventh turn of April. In addition to this effect, units attacking into clear broken, woods, or rough terrain on map 6-4 have their attack strength reduced by one quarter, round fractions up during winter weather turns. And then mountain units, I wanted to, uh, well, it's, it's important. 32-1, uh, mountain units pay one less movement point to cross wooded rough and movement and, and mountain terrain hex sides than called for by the terrain effects chart. And 32-2, mountain units get the, minus, get the minus one movement point benefit of a single track rail, rail line if the cost of crossing the hex side is normally three or more. Did I do a little bit, tiny bit more? Yes, I did. And 32-3. 
Um, mountain units may make the one hex side per turn minimum move allowed by rate of rule 610. I'm not going to get into that. So, so long as they would not pay more than six movement points in moving, moving from enemy zone of control to enemy zone of control. The six movement point cost in this case does not include the additional cost of entering or leaving uh, an enemy zone of control. So there you have it. Uh, this is a... A slow-moving map, I guess, is the way to look at it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know uh, 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 any other way to look at it. Um, it'll be interesting to see um, when we start playing the Caporetto uh, game. But um, hopefully this was uh, a good overview. Okay, that's it.